Hello, welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to estimate by rooms or location. By default, when you add various modules to your estimate, they are organized by their categories here in the left sidebar. For example, substructure, structure, services, and finishes. However, when you have multiple modules added to the same category, it's not immediately clear which module applies to which room or location. This is easily solved by going to the bottom of the left sidebar and toggling the View by Rooms checkbox here. And all of our modules are automatically assigned to the various locations. In this example, the toilet, kitchen, master bedroom, bath, parking, and sunroom. But these are not assigned by magic. It does take a bit of setting up first. So let's take a look at the steps involved to convert your estimate from appearing like this to this. To start with, we'll create a new project. We'll go up to the project pane here and select a project and add a new project. We'll call this one View by Rooms and save. And this opens a new blank project for us. Let's populate this project with some modules. We'll go here to Internal Finishes and select some floor finishes. We'll add Tiles and Create. And we'll add another one, Floor Finishes, Tiles, and Create. And perhaps one more, Floor Finishes, again, Tiles, and Create. Next, let's try some laminate flooring, some floor finishes, laminate, create, and we'll do another one, floor finishes, laminate, and create. And let's do some internal decorating. We'll just go ahead and create that one. Okay, so there's some blank modules for us to start filling in. And you'll notice that all of these have been added to the same category called Finishes. If we hover over the category title, we see a pen icon highlighted here that allows us to edit the title of our category if we wish. But we'll not be making use of that function now. Instead, what we'll do is we'll assign each of these modules to a room. But currently, if we select the View by Rooms toggle, all of these modules are assigned to a general category. Price of Job doesn't have the information it needs to assign these to rooms just yet. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even know the rooms that we have to work with. So to start setting this up, we select the Rooms tab here in the left-hand sidebar. And then from here, we can start adding floors. So if we click the plus add floor button here, it adds a first floor and a second floor. But despite the title, you shouldn't feel restricted to only adding levels of a building. You can use the add floor function here to add a floor, and then rather assigning this to a floor, assign it to an outbuilding, say for example, an external garage. We could also click Add Floor to assign this any other location, say a new extension. And you can add as many locations as you like. For example, this one might be the Backyard Shed. So just because the button says Add Floors, you shouldn't feel restricted. You can use the Add Floors button to add any locations to your rooms. Now that we've given Price Drop a basic structure of our site, it's time to start adding the actual rooms themselves. So here for the first floor, we might have a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a toilet, and a main hall. So we can click Add Room to add a room for each of these. And then we can go here to the title, and we can start retitling each of our rooms. So this one would be the living room, and then this would be our dining room. And then here we have the kitchen, the toilet, and the hall. And we can do the same thing for our second floor. We would have a master bedroom and two other bedrooms, as well as an upstairs bath. So now we can name these the master bedroom, bedroom two, bedroom three, and the bath. And then for the garage, we would probably have a parking area as well as a storage room. So we'll call this the parking garage and here for storage and for the extension we can simply call this the sunroom and for the backyard shed we will just call this outdoor storage 
There, so now for our property, we have all of our locations labeled, being floor one, floor two, garage, new extension, and backyard shed, as well as the rooms for each. Now we have to start inputting our various measurements. So the living room, perhaps, is four by three meters. So the floor area for that would be 12 square meters. The ceiling area would be equal, also 12 square meters. The perimeter of a room, four by three, would be 14 meters long. The standard height of 2.4 meters is automatically input for us, and based on that, the wall's area is automatically calculated. For the dining room, we might have a room that's 3 by 3, so that would be 9 square meters. The ceiling area would also be the same, 9 square meters. And 3 by 3 would be 12 meters perimeter. And again, the wall's area is automatically calculated. Now, inputting these numbers manually is fine if we already know our measurements. But what if we have an irregularly shaped room? That's not a perfect square or rectangle. Well, to accommodate that, we have an edit by rooms function here. So under the edit room column, just click room editor. And this opens a graphic room editor. So by default, it assumes that a room is three by five meters. And we can adjust this manually by grabbing any wall and dragging it outwards. So say our kitchen was four by four, we can manually adjust that to four meters exactly and reduce the sidewall to four meters exactly. And we can zoom in and zoom out and move our graphic anywhere around the table we wish. Now, what about that instance where the room is irregularly shaped? Well, in this case, we have a perfectly rectangular room, but if our room was L-shaped, we could select this and we're given the extra dimensions that we need to measure our room. Or perhaps it was a closet, we could select a T-shape and then we could set the dimensions of our room as well as the closet. I'll just zoom in here to get a better look. So here we can see that our main room is four meters. And we'll increase the width to exactly four meters. Plus we have a one meter closet. And as we adjust this, press jobs automatically calculating the floor area, ceiling area, and perimeter as we make our adjustments. If we need to place any windows or doors, we can do so by simply clicking to add a door and then we can use our mouse to position our door however we wish, and then specify whether that's an inside swinging door or an outside swinging door, and click again. Likewise with windows, we can click add window, and place a window anywhere we need. And then we can click escape to close that tool, and then as we have our mouse over the window, we can either move the window's placement, so we can position it precisely where we need it to be, and we can also grab the side handles here, to change the size of that opening. And as we make our adjustments, these openings are deducted from the area of our walls. So here Price Drop has calculated a total floor area of 17 square meters and a perimeter of 18. Now if we close our window, we'll see that our kitchen measurements have been automatically added here to our room's inventory. And now we can continue to fill these in in the same method. For the downstairs toilet, that's probably a three by one room, so that would be three square meters, same for the ceiling, with a perimeter of eight. And the walls are automatically calculated. For the hall, that would be a six by one meter area, so that would be six square meters. Same for the ceiling. And the perimeter would be 14 meters. And I'll just go ahead and fill in the rest of these values and skip ahead. And now all of our room measurements have been input, and we can now return back to our calculations tab. And now that Price Job knows the rooms that we'll be working on, we can assign each of these modules to a specific room. So let's start with the first one here. So we'll toggle this down to see that this module is for tiles. So we'll click on the three dots and edit, and then change the location from general to kitchen. And then close this page. And now this module has been moved from the general category to the kitchen category because we've selected view by rooms. Bear in mind, if we toggle the view by rooms off, the modules are all arranged by their category. When we view by rooms, we can see which location they're assigned to. So for the kitchen tiles, let's go here to assign the area. And here in the area calculator, we can select this icon here to open the area calculator. And then rather than adding an area manually, we'll go to the rooms tab here at the bottom, select rooms, and then here we see all the measurements that were input for the kitchen. If we click on the numeral, this will copy that information to our clipboard, which we could then paste into the calculator. 
However, Price Job has a handy feature here with a plus icon. We can just click on that and that is added to our area calculator here at the top. If we need to make any adjustments to this, we can do so. And when we're done, we can click Save. And here the area of our floor has been added to our tiles module and a basic estimate calculated. Of course, we can go through and customize this estimate as needed and Price Job will automatically update the costing as we go. Let's do the next one. We'll go to the next floor finishes under the general category. And again, this is a tile, so we'll go to edit. And rather than general, we'll move this one to the main floor toilet. And close this window and go to the area calculator. And we can see that that floor finishes module has been added to a new location category called toilet. So now we'll go to the area calculator, select the rooms tab, and here we have the floor area for our main floor toilet. So we'll just click the plus button here to add that to the area calculator and save. And again, a basic estimate has been calculated for the floor finishes for the main floor toilet. Let's do another one. We have another tiles module here. Let's edit this one and we'll assign this location to the upstairs bath and close. And again, we have a new location category here created and we can go to the area calculator, select rooms and for the upstairs bath, click the plus button to add that to our area calculator and save. And again, a basic estimate is calculated for the upstairs bath. Next, we have some laminate flooring. So for this one, we will edit and change this from general to the dining room and close. And again, we have a new location category created and we'll go to our area calculator, select rooms and for the dining room, assign the floor area for our dining room and save. And there's a basic calculation made for our laminate flooring for the dining room. And now for the next laminate flooring, we'll go to edit, change location from general to the main hall. And again, a new location category is created. And here we'll go to our area calculator, select rooms and click plus for the hall floor area and save. And we have one more module here under general called decorating. So we'll change this one from general to the master bedroom. And now we have a new master bedroom location created. So for this, we might be painting some walls and painting a ceiling. So for the walls, we will click the area calculator, go to rooms. And here for the master bedroom, we can click the plus button under the walls area and save. And then for the ceiling, we can click the area calculator and go to the rooms. And you'll notice that the area calculator does not represent the ceiling areas here, but it is equal to the floor area. So we will just click the plus for the floor area to paint the ceiling and save. And now this basic calculation has been done. And all of our modules are assigned to the various locations. So when the client is asking you what the cost is by the room, you'll have a much clearer indication as to the estimates by area. Now, if you've already set your rooms up in advance and you want to add a new module, you can do so. So for example, perhaps we might need some internal decorating and we can click that. And now as we're creating our module, rather than just clicking create here, before we do so, we can assign the location to one of our rooms. So rather than assigning this to a room, let's assign this to our outdoor storage shed and create. And again, a new location category has been added here for our outdoor storage shed. So for this, we'll be painting the walls. And for our area calculator, we can go to the rooms tab, scroll down to our outdoor storage and select the plus icon for the walls area and save. And that is added to our estimate. Now, if we have a module already added to our estimate that we need to duplicate to add to a different location, we can click on the three dots here and duplicate that module. And now when we select the three dots in this one, we can go ahead and edit. And let's change this one rather than the outdoor storage. Let's move this one to the sunroom and close this window. And a new location has been added for our sunroom. So now we can select this module here 
And the measurements are currently a duplicate of our outdoor storage shed. So we will change this from our outdoor storage shed. We'll open the area calculator and we'll click the trash bin here to remove this measurement and then go back to our rooms tab. And then for our sunroom, we can go ahead and click the plus icon to add the walls area for our sunroom and save. And here we can see that our sunroom estimate has been updated to reflect the differences in measurements from the outdoor storage area. And if we toggle the view by rooms function, we see that all of these modules are actually categorized under the finishes category. But when we view by rooms, we can see that each is assigned to a different location. And if the client wants to know room by room what the costs are, it's much easier to tell them. Now, when we go to our reports tab to take a look at our quote, we can see that our quote is arranged by the room. And we can share this with our client and they can see the exact price breakdown for each of the various rooms. If we prefer to show this just as general categories, we can uncheck the view by rooms and all of these same modules are included under the one finishes category. So it's easy to see why the client might prefer to have the rooms specifically itemized. This is particularly handy for subcontractors as especially schools or hotels would be interested to see the cost per room. And the client will have a clearer idea as to whether or not they want to include this outdoor storage shed in this current project or not. Let's go back to calculations and let's just add one more module here. Let's go back to internal decorating. And this time let's assign this to the kitchen and create. And this time perhaps we'll have some wallpaper and we'll click the area calculator go to the rooms tab and under kitchen we will select the walls area and save and now we can see that the kitchen location category now has two modules in it and if we go back to the reports tab to see our quote we can see that the kitchen has both the floor finishes and internal decorating wallpaper included in the estimate they can also see the price quote by tile as well as wallpaper and you have a variety of options here on the sidebar as to how you want the quote to appear. You can show the stage prices in detail or none at all. Just the main total only at the bottom. Or you can show the total and the stages. Or the complete detailed costs of materials, labor, plant and tool and other costs. You also have the option of selecting advanced structure, which shows the complete breakdown of all the individual materials, labor, plant and tool and you have the option to show or hide the descriptions, show or hide the materials, labor, plant and tool, other costs, price, and units. In this case, let's just stick with a simple structure showing only the total and stages. And that's how to use the view by rooms function. Thank you for using Price a Job.